idea what time it is. It's time to turn your radios up. Broadcasting the latest news on the World Scout Movement, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uninterrupted, since 2005, at www.scoutingradio.com. We are your station for the Scout Movement, Scouting Radio. We are at Scouting Radio, broadcasting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at www.scoutingradio.com. It's Justin Dawson with you, and we're talking about scouting and uh, why you scout. That's the main topic of the show today. Get in contact with us. I think it's quite clear what that uh, song's called. Hands Atom, awesome, Paint the Sky on Scouting Radio. Hello, it's Justin Dawson with you. We're going to do a full program to inspire all you scout leaders and scouts out there and ask the question, what keeps you scouting? It's a great question, especially if you're an adult leader. What keeps you scouting? Is it the fact that your son or daughter is involved with the scout group or were you a scout before? We love to hear your thoughts and comments. We have loads of different uh, clips lined up. We've been asking this on social media for the uh, past couple of days and we have got so many messages in and uh, loads of messages that I didn't even get to read in my last show. Yes, I have been absent for the past week or two uh, and thanks to all the team that kept things ticking over on Scouting Radio. There's been so much going on uh, in the personal life of Justin so uh, and uh, you can look at my official website justinordawson.com to uh, see a bit more of that if you want that's if you're interested in my personal life uh, outside of scouting but like i've been getting some qualifications up on my uh on my cv and uh been busy with work because this isn't the full-time job of all volunteers here in scouting radio and um, but <laughs> we love it anyway so, so that's why the topic did come up how do you keep yourself inspired? Why are you a scout leader or what keeps you involved with the scout movement? Love to hear some inspiring stories. Want to say hello to Owen Quinn. Thank you for listening in. Hayley Mordew, uh, I'm a scout leader from Tamworth in Australia, New South Wales. Just thought I'd jump on and say hello. Uh, thank you for listening in, Hayley. Uh, Sophie Gray, my Friend went on a jamboree to Japan and one stopped singing the song when they came back. Oh, they're talking about the I'm Changing the World Today song, the uh, jamboree anthem for the World Scout Jamboree two years ago now. Wow. Um, good morning from Hen-Neda? 
Hanada uh, Airport in Tokyo. I'm waiting for my flight back home to England and listening in on the Scouting Radio app that says uh, Rob March. Thank you for listening in. Uh, great initiative and congrats. Regards from uh, Brazil, uh, from Jodelin Sobino. Thank you for listening in to Scouting Radio. And um, who else have we got here? Who else have we got? Tracy Reynolds, just telling my scouting friends about your radio station. Thank you for that, Tracy. Um, so we're going to start off the program with some music. And that is from the, where are we? I have too many uh, clips open here on my page. Yes, the camp song for the Denmark National Jamboree that's going on. Um, it's some some great lyrics Um for the song translated from Danish, it's now now backpack and strapped securely on your back. So it's time to say goodbye to mum and dad across the bridge, out of the blue, a scout swarm of all, in all colours, a friend you still do not know looking at you. Come on, come with, with we leave traces and we do it together. Come on, get going. The price we find along the way. Come on, come with, we leave traces, we do it together. Come on and get going and take your mate with. The morning sun bakes your tent. Hair bristles a day call. We shall call on an adventure. This is a great song. I, I like this. It's in Danish. So um, have a listen and tell us what you think. Danish Jamboree 2017. Skating Radio. There's a great video that goes with the song. Available on the Spain 
I'll, I'll have to put up the link on the <laughs> Skating Radio website. I think it's already on the Skating Radio website. But there is a great video that goes with that. You have two scout leaders cycling exercise bikes. Um, scouts playing pillow fights in tents. Yes, all scout leaders love that. Um, when scouts are, or cubs or younger beavers are still awake at camp and they're having a pillow fight in their tents. Yeah, that never happens, no. Uh, <laughs> so there's a great video that goes along with it. And then uh, scouts banging uh, pots and pans while singing the song for the uh, anthem to the Danish Jamboree that's happening uh, during the summer and we'll have live reporters on the ground at that Jamboree. If you are attending, please do let us know. Studio at scoutingradio.com. That is our email address. That's studio at scoutingradio.com. It's Justin Dawson on Scouting Radio. Yes, and uh, loads of comments coming in. I just want to keep going with some of the uh, the emails that came in to us and Facebook messages. And you can Facebook us on facebook.com forward slash scouting radio, where you will see our live cam going on at the moment uh, from the studios in Dublin, Ireland. We're also live on YouTube as well. So uh, if you want to tune in there, you can do so. And also available on your official scouting radio app free of charge available from the android google play store and want to say hello to um angel sandoval uh, from daytona beach florida thank you for listening in shout out from canada to christian clark thank you for listening in robert williams from hertfordshire hello and thank you for listening in and tracy breen who uh, was on the wood badge with me. Thank you for listening in, Tracy. Uh, Mad on Music, thank you for listening in. Uh, Nikki Lettinger, um, thank you for tuning in to Scouting Radio. Um, hi from Mexico, from Floor Lumber uh, Fluberry. I hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Apologies if I'm not. Uh, Nikki Lettinger, uh, Gregory Sale from uh, Elgin, Scotland, thank you for listening in. Uh, Mersey Weaver Scouts and Sam Mason, thank you for tuning in to Scouting Radio. Hello from the Scouts of Portugal, 412 Alfred Guide, I, Alfred Gade, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Miguel Placido uh, from the Scouts of Portugal. Um, Sophie Gray, thank you for listening in. Um, hello from Cardiff in Wales, from Carl Hewitt. And the messages keep on going on. Shane Hicks, uh, another one of my old scout friends who's listening in to scouting radio as well thank you for tuning in and um, you can email us studio at scoutingradio.com you can visit our website www.scoutingradio.com now we've got what while we were talking about jamborees and talking about what inspires you to be involved in scouts this is a great uh, story of why one scout master is heading to the national scout jamboree I'm Harrison, and I am the Scoutmaster of Troop 57 in Garland, Texas. As a scout, I had great experiences going to Philmont, going to the 1985 National Jamboree. Those were things that I wanted both of my boys to be able to experience and to participate in. With my older son, I was able to do that in 2013. He came back from the 2013 National Jamboree so excited and so enthused that as soon as the registration opened for volunteers for the 2017 National Jamboree, he told me, we've got to sign up, we've got to go, and we've got to take more scouts than we took in 2013 when we go back in 2017. As a parent and as a scoutmaster, the National Jamboree is one of those events that I believe every scout should have the opportunity to participate in. It was so good. It's one of those experiences where they're going to go as a young scout and they're going to mature throughout their time at the National Jamboree. And they're gonna come out as a young man who's had a great deal of experience and a lot of fun. Couldn't be any clearer why to go to the National Jamboree. Scouting Radio will have Ed Evans uh, in Virginia. He's our Virginia correspondent uh, on Scouting Radio. And we will be doing a daily show for at least an hour each day during the National Scout Jamboree 
uh, the BSA National Scout Jamboree in West Virginia at the Summit Betchell Reserve. And you can tune into Scouting Radio in July and August to hear that. It's going to be one amazing, amazing jamboree. Scouting Radio. Follow us on Twitter. Keyword Scouting Radio. Um, when these children walk in the door, I want you to all remember one thing. Okay, It's no longer your child. It's our scout. And it all comes down to sharing. You know, so if you want to make a difference in the community and you want your children to be good leaders, the key to good leadership is learning how to share. We got a thing we call servant leadership. And basically what that means is you lead through others. So by me being the boss and me empowering you people to be successful, now look at all the leaders we've created. And that's what we're doing with the boys. So if we want the boys to become real good leaders, the key for us is to be good role models. And that means we share the work, we share the fun, we share the responsibilities. We don't look to be asked to be told to do things, we offer help for you. you know, because <clears throat> that's what we want for our kids. We don't want our kid to sit there and watch somebody struggle. We want him to go and say, hey, can I help you with that? Helpful, friendly, courteous, kind. Okay, this is what it's all about. If we can be helpful, friendly, courteous, and kind, we can work on the rest of the scout oath and the scout laws for the boys. But it starts there. You know, look around the room, see all the people, and make everybody feel welcome. That's what it's about, you know. I mean, you should feel good about coming here. This is a place you don't have to compete with anybody. We have uniforms for a reason. It's not because, you know, we want to be special with everybody. We want the field to be level so that all the kids have the same opportunities. At the end of the day, the end game is to become an Eagle Scout. But if we get them to first class, we give them the values that will last us all a lifetime, and we'll all benefit from this. So the game is to, you know, not take it so serious. Understand that scouting has a place in the community. It doesn't go away. It's not seasonal. If the children have to go play in the theater or they want to play sports, go do it. Have fun doing it. But remember to come home. Scouting is always here for you kids. You know, you can't make it all the time. You go to summer camp. You come back, you have problems, tell people. You see the kids aren't being engaged, ask them what you can do to help them. Make them feel like they're special too, because not all of us have the same home relationships. You know, some families are stronger, some families aren't so strong. There's a lot of single parents here. And this is the one place the kids can come and get, you know, rock solid foundations. Don't tell them they're doing great when they're doing okay. Just say, nice job, you're doing all right. You know, good is good, great is great. Mediocrity is, thanks for coming. You know, and just keep encouraged to, to keep doing better. But we've got to try ourselves as parents, you know, not to let each other struggle. When you see people that are a little late, hey, what can I do to help? You know, if we all do a little, nobody has to do a lot, and it's fun, and we want to be here. You know, and just have fun with it. Don't take it so serious. It's not about who got the eagle first. It doesn't matter when you get to be an eagle. 18 years old is the cutoff date. It doesn't matter. Enjoy the trail. It's a lot of fun. Don't get so excited. I'm 14. I gotta be an eagle. Nobody's gonna respect the poor kid. You're not doing your son of service if you think you can push him the gate too fast. He's gonna drag you soon enough, but tap him a little bit so he gets the respect that he earns. You're gonna get that here, a sense of fair play that you'll never get from playing any of the sports around here. It's all competitive. Oh, my kid's better than your kid. Look at my shoes. Wow. Is that what it's come down to? That's not what this program is about. This program is about leveling the playing field and giving each and every child in here the same opportunity to be a senior patrolier or patrol. My son got to be an Eagle Scout and was never a senior patrolier. No, you don't have to be the big boss, but you still can be a great leader. So it's about servant leadership. It's about leading through others and making other people better leaders. And if you remember that, it all falls into play for you. You don't have to fight it. Scouting Radio is listener-supported radio. We are a volunteer station funded by you, the Scouting Radio listener, through donations and purchases on our online store. Visit scoutingradio.com. Yeah. 
Skating Radio, we're talking about the great topic of what keeps you scouting. Have you any people that inspires you to keep scouting? Is it your scout leader? Is it an old scout friend? Is it the fact that your mother or father was involved in scouts, so it ran in the family for years and years? Let us know. Studio at scoutingradio.com is our email address. You can Facebook us, Facebook Live. Uh, we are on facebook.com forward slash scouting radio. We're also on Twitter. You can tweet us at scouting radio or use the hashtag scouting radio. And, of course, on our official website, www.scoutingradio.com. Live internet radio on scouting. Available 24 hours a day at www.scoutingradio.com. My name is Ahmed Hindawi, and I'm sending this message on my first day as the Secretary General of the World Organization of the Scout Movement here from our global support center, Nikola Lampur. Some of you may recognize me as the former United Nations envoy in youth, but many more will immediately recognize my scout uniform and the scarf, a symbol connecting millions of young people around the world who joined the scouting at some point in their lives. In my case, I joined the scouting when I was almost 12 years old in a local scout group at my school in Zarqa, Georgia. That experience has left a profound impact on my life. It was the first time I realized that education is not limited to the classroom because the non-formal education offered in scouting contributes in an unparalleled way to the development of a young person at all levels. Scouting has enabled me to realize at a young age that the values enshrined in our promise and law constitute a path for a life of service and contribution. Today, I rejoined the Scout Movement to serve as the 10th Secretary General in its rich history, which spans over 110 years. As an enthusiast myself about the Sustainable Development Goals, I draw wisdom from the very words of Lord Baden Powell, the founder of Scouting who described the role of scouts when the League of Nations was first founded by saying that the scouts should work to make the League of Nations a bond between people, not only a pact between nations. In a world where people and the planet face interconnected challenges, scouting continues to be a source of development, sustainability, resilience, and offering unique value-based education. Our shared vision at the World Organization of the Scout Movement is by 2023 to become the world's leading educational youth movement, enabling 100 million young people to be active citizens, creating positive change in their communities and in the world. As Secretary General, I will work to further unite our movement and solidify a world-class World Scout period. We will continue to embrace the spirit of the movement, embody its values, and celebrate its diversity. We will achieve our vision by encouraging innovation and continue to develop our programs and events to keep up with a constantly changing world. We will mobilize our assets to support the growth and expansion of the movement while deepening our social impact on the communities. We will work to actively support our member organizations and develop scouting in countries where scouting is not fully developed yet. We we'll reach out to the most vulnerable to offer them the hope and promise of education. Scouting as a major international education movement will advocate to promote non-formal education and youth empowerment around the world. We will work with others to develop a strategic partnerships to invest in the world's most important asset, our children and youth. Inspired by the wisdom of our founders and the rich tradition and impact of decades of scouting, I am determined to work to strengthen the contribution of our movement to creating a better world. Scouting 
will continue to evolve, offering a live transforming experience like the one I had 20 years ago. At the World Organization of the Scout Movement, we pledge to create a better world. Scouting Radio. If it's scouting, we have it covered. Today we're going to be walking in the holiday parade. We have lots of floats, and I hope we have fun. Scouting Radio. Scouting has impacted me greatly. I want to tell you all, it's about leadership. Scouting has made a leader out of me. And the way that it has made me a leader is not how the scouting system is set up. It's about how the scouting system impacts the people that impact the people that impact the people. And to just be a part of something that is bigger than myself, you all, it is just a great privilege and honor to do everything that I do today. But the one thing I can say scouting has done for me the most is gave me a father. My scoutmaster is my father. He wasn't able to be here today because he had to work. But scouting, out of everything it done for me, the places that I've been, sea base, scouting, uh, in the mountains, everywhere, the one thing I can truly say that it has done for me that my mother tried her best to do was to give me someone to follow to give me some hope, give me time to believe that I can be great and I can be everything that I can be. Because I thought growing up on the Camelton Road, there were times where I would beat up walking down the street. There were times where just for being different, just for being different, and for I had to hide my uniform as a child. Because in my school, scouting was not cool. No one knew I was in scouting. We would sell popcorn at Walmart, and I would duck off behind the desk when I see some of my friends. And this is something that has greatly impacted me, and me, not, me as a child not knowing the opportunities that I have now that the people who beat me up did not have. That is great, and that is so heavy on my heart that everybody here right now is looking at me. I have your full attention, and nobody here can see anything that I've been through. There are things that my mother do not know what I've been through. There, scouting has done so much for me. If it's not going to a party on Saturday and going to my meeting, going to my camping trip, and finding out one of my friends was shot and killed at a party that I was supposed to be in attendance. Scouting has saved my life on the daily, and that's why I do what I can. That's why I'm a lifeguard. I try to save. I try to do what you all have done for me. And I want you all to just know, the small things count. The small thing, if it's giving me a dollar when I was a child to go camping, because we couldn't afford to go camping, we had help. So much, so much to save one life. And I want to be that person to save plenty more. But scouting you all, it's just, it's made me a leader. Right now, I am Mr. Junior at Benedict College. I serve on the Royal Court. I am the parliamentarian for the School of Honors. I received the 4.0 my freshman year in college. <laughs> I now hold a 3.7 GPA. There are so many things, so internships. I also serve 100 black men. So many things that when I say I am an Eagle Scout, People are surprised. People are shocked. E being an Eagle Scout, I will have an interview, and I promise we will talk about what I have done as an Eagle Scout. Talk about the thing, Eagle, talk about being an Eagle Scout more than any other thing. And then I am proud to hear you got the job. Yes, you got the scholarship. Thank you. This is so. This is so much more than what we think it is. One movement, one station, scouting radio. scouting radio. Some great reports coming in. What keeps you scouting? It's Justin Dawson. It's live from the Dublin, Ireland studios of Scouting Radio. That's the question we're asking all our listeners today. What keeps you scouting? Hello to and good morning to Ken Array. Uh, don't know where you're listening in from, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Douglas Majuka from Venezuela, of all places. Thank you for listening in. John Daniel Murada, uh, can you do a shout out to the BSP 
of Manila Council. Yes, we can. Uh, once a scout, always a scout. Uh, I love scouting, says Mar Scout. Thank you for that. Christopher Hayward Ram Rasmussen. I am a scout from uh, Maribo in Denmark. Thank you for listening in. And apologies if I pronounce your name wrong. Um, a couple more uh, emails coming in and Facebook messages. Eva Jovanovic. Uh, thank you for listening in. Um, John Francis Scout. Hello from Nigeria. Thank you. And John Rickard from Cornwall, UK. Thank you for tuning in to Scouting Radio. Uh, from Trinidad and Tobago Scout from Rakesh. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have loads more coming in, so thank you for all your comments. Do Facebook us, Facebook Live. Uh, we are uh, we are on Facebook Live, I should say. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Scouting Radio, where you can see this live webcam and live stream going on. Of course, you can listen back to us on demand at uh, ondemand.scoutingradio.net where you can download all our podcasts as well. Now, th those are just some of the clips coming in, but uh, one that really inspires me was I was on Founders Day uh, weekend. Scouting Ireland have their honour awards every year and they honour scouts who have done exceptional things. And this is two little Cub Scouts, Rory and Peter. Have a listen to this. Rory and Peter. Which one's Rory and which one's Peter? And you're Peter. Just heard an amazing story of how you, the two of you guys helped rescue your grand from a fire. Tell us a bit more. Wow. And you, you two guys were in the same room when it all happened, yeah? Yeah, we were playing Xbox. Playing the Xbox, and then all of a sudden you've seen a bit of smoke. Uh, so you learned all these skills through Cub Scouts and the emergency. So what did, what, who, who raised the alarm first? I did. You did, yeah? So, and did, was there a lot, of, a lot of smoke in the room? Did you have to crawl along the ground? Yeah. Well, we had, no, there was only smoke in one room, so we went into a different room. You went into a different one. And did, did someone ring the ambulance or the fire brigade? Yeah, we rang the fire brigade. Wow. You guys are absolutely great. What age are you just going? Both 10. Both 10, both getting your bronze award for honour in, in Scouting Ireland. You guys are great. Really, really thank you for talking to us today, OK? Ready. Come on! Broadcasting the latest news on the World Scout movement 24 hours a day. Seven days a week, uninterrupted, since 2005 at www.scoutingradio.com. We are your station for the Scout Movement, Scouting Radio. Yes, indeed. Rory and Peter, and then we were talking to um, the Wexford Sea Scouts as well, and uh, we reported on that before about two um, Venture Scouts who saved the life of a Portuguese boy over in Portugal while on holidays. You can check that out on the on-demand section of Scouting Radio. But these stories are what makes scouting, I believe. What makes you involved in scouting? Let us know. Studio at scoutingradio.com. That is our email address. Live internet radio on scouting. Available 24 hours a day at www.scoutingradio.com.
scouting radio. One movement. Get more merit badges, have more fun, and just a blast. One station. My group has been there before. We try and do one adventure about every year. Scouting radio. Scouting radio. Justin Dawson in the Dublin Ireland studios. We're live on Facebook, live on YouTube and available around the world on our official website, www.scoutingradio.com. Now, one of our listeners sent in a message, which it nearly slipped my mind. This uh, was an incredible story about two weeks ago now, maybe three weeks ago. Um, Tobias Elward, the politician who gained praise uh, for heroism after a fatal stabbing outside the UK Parliament in London, was an eagle well do we say, do we say was or is i think sorry let me correct that is an eagle scout elwood was born in new york city to british parents and was a member of the boy scout of america's transatlantic council which serves american scouts living overseas he earned scouting's highest honor in on may the 25th 1982 as a member of troop 427 of vienna austria uh, on March the 22nd, a terrorist drove a vehicle into pedestrians on Westminster Bridge, killing three. He then fatally, fatally stabbed an, a police officer with a knife outside a parliament complex. Elwood, who served five years in the British Army, was photographed kneeling over the po- policeman's body. He performed mouth-to-mouth resuscitation and tried to apply pressure to the officer's chest, according to the report in the guardian and he was praised for heroism as well and hopefully at some stage we can get tobias uh, on uh, scouting radio to talk about that day and um, incredible stories in other words there's an eagle scout who put his life forward uh, to help others what keeps you scouting that is the question we are asking uh, all our listeners today now uh, thank you again to all the listeners um off topic who have been sending us loads of photos of mudslides scarf days and blue and gold in the past week or two they're all going up on the scouting radio website and on our social media pages if you share them with us and allow us to to place them up on our websites and um, do send them in to studio at scoutingradio.com you can join us on facebook facebook.com forward slash scouting radio or you can tweet us uh, your photos um, to twitter.com uh, forward slash scouting radio or at scouting radio or you can use the hashtag scouting radio um, and we'll share them with all our listeners as well now we had um, in the past week or two this is another story that really is inspiring have you ever gone done or thinking about doing the explorer belt competition well we caught up with uh balbriggan scouts uh two of the smith family who are who are are the purple and gold army as they're known as the balbriggan scouts in dublin ireland and uh, first of all i spoke with father david who explained a bit about what the explorer belt is all about that you're going to before you leave Okay. And literally at the airport, uh, as we did for this, then we, we split the teams into two. One flew to Pizza, Pisa, and the other flew to Milan. Uh, mm. uh, and they literally only found out at three o'clock in the morning at the airport. Right. Okay. Uh, and they separated. Uh, we went. We went to Milan. Yeah. We went to Milan. We went to Milan. Uh, and well, you told them in advance what the whole plans were as 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 the leaders. We, we planned. We, okay. we knew what we were. We planned every single inch of it. So it's probably hard keeping the secret for all that. Uh, it's uh, very easy keeping secrets. We just don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and from there they have ten days to, to walk to the destination. Once they get off the train or once they they are dropped by us, they are given an envelope. We open the envelope and all the instructions are in there. Now you're not allowed to use any public transport. No, you, you will have yep. permission to use up to 100 kilometres of public transport. You can't use more than 10 kilometres a day. Um, but it, it can, it's extra to the 200. Right, okay. Now, along the way, just doing challenges, trying to find... Is it, do you have to stay in, in inside, or could you just decide, right... 
I can't find someone to let me in to stay the night to have a shower. I'm going to just bivy out. Are you allowed to do that? No, so you have to have permission from wherever you're going to stay. So if it's a public property, you have to have permission from the state government. I guess the guys have mobile phones along the way, just in case for emergency purposes. Well, I'm sure it's a, it's a fun, fun challenge trying to keep them all charged. Well, the, the phones that we issue them with are, are probably the old Nokia 310s or whatever they are. The ones that keep for life, yeah. Yeah, they keep going for months. Yeah. Um, so, but even then, if the phone goes down, it's all part of getting you to interact with the people that you, you meet. Can I charge my phone? Now, one of the challenges that we heard was swapping a potato, bigger is better type of thing. What was the other challenges that were set up for the, for the 10 days? It was a cultural diary. So you, you sort of looked at the, the culture of Italy, what struck you as you were going along. Um, there was ones on uh, the industry of the area, there were ones on the religious significance of the area, uh, it would cover the whole gamut. Sending a letter home to the essential workers and projects, writing a letter to the essential workers, how do you feel when you get to the essential workers? We had another one on refugees, how the refugees would affect the area, um, all to get you talking to, with the people that you meet. They were all ones that you could, okay, you could look them up on Google, but that would be reflected in your logs that you would just work on Google. Whereas if the personal experience of the people you're staying with is reflected back, you knew you would have Now, you, have, you probably have several teams that are across with Scouting Ireland. Is, it, is there any occasions where you get a phone call and go, okay, help us here, my, my partner in along with me is, is freaking out, he doesn't want to do any more of this, or she doesn't want to do any more of this, or uh, did you have any seriously bad experiences where you have to go try and help people? No, of course not. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, everyone has an up day, everyone has a down day, like, we, we're there to help, that's, that's the way. Counselors. You know, exactly, yeah. we're, there, we're there to reassure, if we have to go out and, and pick somebody up from the road, bring them in for a night, you know, put them back out again the next day. That, that's what we're there to do. Mm. Uh, it's all part of the, 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 the tour bus experience. And then as soon as they arrive on day 10, have they got a, a timeline on day 10 that they must arrive? Oh, a timeline on day 10. I mean, the guys arrived early, so they couldn't actually come into base camp. It, it, like it was between 4 and 5. You have to check in. And one lot came in like one minute past four and they, yeah, one minute they came in and one minute to five. Would you have been that cool and said we're not getting the best? Oh, if they didn't turn up by five, then, then it was wrong. Everything was wrong. Everything we do is also written up in our lives. So if we had any contact with them, high up or low down, we wrote it down and the assessors can come out from our weekend. We read all that today and we have no start with it. So, now you say assessors coming out, they would go through the whole lot of that whole lot to make sure everything's accountable? Yep, every single bit has gone through, they tell the story, they have probably had three interviews, uh, various lengths of time, probably the first interview was about an hour, I would say, the, the second interview was probably two hours, and the last interview probably half an hour. But everything has gone through, and the assessors read all the logs before they go for the interview. Wow. It's with minute detail. Wow. So the, the, there hasn't been any fails on, on this explore belt expedition? Not on Italy. No. 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 But I mean, it, that, there have been in the past, of course. No. Well, I, I, say that's, that, I say that's fun to tell someone after 10 days. By the way, no, you didn't, didn't pass, good luck. So, so you, the next one is Poland. The uh, next one is Poland. The age range for the Explore Belt is from... Can you go as, as young as Ventures now? No. No. No, it has to be over 18. It's for over age. 18 to 26. 26, yeah. It's 55 and 20, 300. Good days. Uh, yeah. In Ireland, if you want to do the ventures, they do the venture channel. Yeah. yeah. 
for 10 days expedition, two euro 50 per day. How, how, how did you manage on two euro 50 a day? I was really relying on generosity of the others. Thank, thank God for it as well, or else it would have been an awful jam. I, I, I suppose it's a lot to do with the people that you meet. Yeah. We, we presented ourselves as best we could for people who hadn't got showers and days and who could probably do with a wash, I'd say. We weren't the kindest people on the people's noses, but um, th thankfully they took us in. Uh, the scouting neckerchief got us everywhere. That was, that was well, this is, this is it. The scouting neckerchief does get you a lot of places. Now, did you practice your Italian before you actually went? Oh, we did. No, we, we, we got it all on the first day, really, to be honest. We didn't really get in much preparing in beforehand. The first day, luckily, when we got off the train the first day, we met a, a, an Italian woman who was just back from America, and she was just asked to learn English, and she was happy to be able to use her English and teach us how to uh, Italian phrases and stuff like that. So, lucky enough for us, I just would have been stuck. So, how many times did you use that line, I am a scout from Ireland at the time? Oh, at least 20 times a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I still remember it to this day. It's kind of just ingrained in if you ever meet an Italian person, that's all it'll get from me. Like. Yeah, no. How difficult was it? Like, you arrived in the first day, was it difficult to just, like, you have to have guts about you to go into a shop and go, I'm a scout from Ireland, give me some free stuff. Yeah, no, that was a big challenge about it as well. The language barrier being one of the big ones, but you know, once you get over that, it's kind of, it is tough going on the day, and us being brothers as well, we kind of knew what we, not to do to annoy each other, so yeah. that being a big factor in it as well, but the heat was a, a big thing. But for, for, the first, for the first few times, there was a lot of, uh, you go, no, no, you go, I'm not doing it. And a bit of a push in the shop, and then just eventually just jump into it. And once you get once you get going, you'd be amazed what now people did do you, for you. Did you offer any services for um, some food or you know? Uh, no, it's generally offered. offered yeah, to us. like we we bought pasta um, on day one, and we bought a bit of meat. And any people we approached and said, could we cook our meat? We didn't say, will you cook this dinner? Yeah. And they were like, no, no, you guys keep that. And they, in abundance, they gave us food, water, and anything that they could offer us, they gave it to us. Now, the one challenge I've heard is the bigger special with the actual data spud. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and, and what other challenges did you encounter along the way? The, what was the other challenges? The, well, the history about the area. We had, yeah, we had to learn about the history of the area, and the both of us had to learn 20 sentences each in Italian. So that's 40 sentences overall, and we had to be able to speak them without reading them out. Um, so it had to be in our minds. Well, that's a bit hard for two lads in 10 days amongst eight projects and nine projects that we had to do. We had to learn Italian on top of that. Now, I, was just, I just heard from the Father David there just how difficult it is. Like, if you arrive late, good luck. Ten days later, you're not getting yeah, your belt. Uh, we, we were at, at the finish line, and uh, we did arrive early, but we were just finishing off the projects, and I suppose the time got away from us. And the girls at the, uh, at the finish line were like, ten, nine, eight, and we were running because two seconds after that, you're gone. There's no, no hope in hell of you getting that, no that belt. Like, there's there. no leeway at all. They're very strict about it. And fairness to it, it's... It, 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 yeah, it, it added to the bit of like, oh, come on, come on, <laughs> a bit of panic and a bit of a sense of relief, a sense of achievement about it that the, the rules were. I also heard that you were supposed to write a letter back to yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. did you actually read your postcard afterwards and did it actually make sense? The, uh, the funny thing about the postcard was I didn't have as good as Italian at that time when we bought the postcard. And the lady ripped me off. She made me buy a postcard and four stamps. We only needed one stamp, but she right. charged me for four. And we wrote. Uh, uh, There's your two fifty gone for the day. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. And we, so we were there. And when we got back to base camp, we we only had letters of encouragement because we didn't know whether whether we would have got the belt or not because it was stage three when we had to send it off. And um, we were very reassured. We were like, you lads, even if you didn't get it, look at where you've come. You've come two hundred pounds together. 24-7 with each other, you know an awful lot about the person who you're yeah. with, you know what I mean? It's a, a great testimony to John and myself. Any, any moments where you just had to tell with this? Oh, there's a few of them, like, I think it was two or three the nights we got in, we were knocking around a different place, and I think we met 30 or 40 houses at this stage, and everyone was, no, no, no. There's a few houses we knocked into, it was kind of a house party or something like, geez, it'd be a good, good crack to get in there, and we'd ring the doorbell and everything go quiet, and here everyone, shh. And if you keep looking out the windows and checking to see if we were still there and hoping that we had left. And we later found out that there was people staying in the town that they didn't want to in the town. So 
us arrived maybe back in our back they, they thought we were part of that group as well so they were kind of they were, weren't too quick to let us in in that sense yeah. there's two or three rough nights but we got there yeah. did, on, did anyone yeah. give you any money towards Actually, that's the oh, one thing. Nobody, yeah, no, no one gave you any stuff. Yeah, that's an absolute fact. A reference food. Uh, the, and abundance of food. Absolutely delicious. Unfortunately, we don't drink wine, but we're offered an awful lot of wine along the trip. I suppose we're in wine. Well, you're not going to think of bringing that to 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 bribe the the last judges on all the way. By the way, guys, you know, that's good hindsight thinking. If only. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, we didn't need it at the end. Thankfully, we didn't. What, what do you recommend it to others? Oh, definitely, 100%. Once in a lifetime experience. Wouldn't get, an opp- wouldn't get an opportunity to do what we did ever again. Now, I'm just after hearing, while I was sitting there eating dinner, some of the guys doing it in Wales back in the 1980s. Mm. Would you have rather t- a cold English environment? <laughs> no, no, definitely. No, no. Definitely Give me heat no. any day. Yeah, <laughs> Give me you were saying that the, yeah. the souls were sticking to the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, when, if waking up to put on wet clothes might be a bit We do it up up. every day of the week yeah, here yeah, in Ireland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it was a welcome thing. Even if you jumped in a lake and just left the teacher put aside, 20 minutes later, the thing's bone dry. Did you, yeah. did you bring that much clothes or did you just go, right, you know what, to hell with this. He's my brother. He knows I stink anyway. <laughs> uh, no, we brought uh, enough socks and jocks for every day. And then such a thing about two or three t-shirts and two pairs of shorts. That was yeah. the bare minimum. The bare minimum. And then just trying to keep your skate uniform clean for the last day. Yeah, keep that safe and stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, guys, well done. It is, it is a great achievement. And, uh, thank you very much for talking about uh, it. Thank you. Very much. Scouting Radio is listener supported. Help fund the station through your donations and purchases. Check out our online store at scoutingradio.com. Yes, indeed. That's the Bell Brigham Scouts. Uh, Two of the Smith brothers that took part in the Explore Belt. And uh, I'm sure if you want more information about the Explore Belt, uh, contact us through Scouting Radio and we can give you details of how to get involved with your Scout Association. Um, or if you're in Ireland, of course, the next one, I believe, is in Poland. Um, so uh, good luck to all the Scouts that are going to take part in that. You're still sending loads of emails in and loads of comments about what keeps you scouting. And we're going to keep them going um, uh, for our next show. And we, if you want to po- post some uh, comments on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Scouting Radio. You can tweet us at Scouting Radio. And you can visit our website, www.scoutingradio.com. If you missed out on some of the show and you want to listen back, you can do so on ondemand.scoutingradio.net. I am two minutes to uh, to the top of the hour here and uh, I need to say goodbye. I shall be back later in the week. Coming up next is Kenneth uh, with the Scouting Stuff You Should Know show from live from Canada. From me, Justin Dawson, thanks for listening in and uh, wish you good scouting. We have it covered. 24-hour internet radio on the scout movement with reports of scout camps, jamborees, and events throughout the world. Log on to our website, scoutingradio.com.